Hey, so today we're gonna make some pork chops for the kids. Got some fresh ingredients. I wanna make a quick video about uh, the MVP of any garden. And uh, I'm gonna go show you my last ingredient, something that everyone should have in their food forest. Even if you don't like to eat it. Stay tuned. Okay, so MVP of any garden. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? It's been a busy, uh, a busy last little while. Um, I talked about an eco pond that we're doing, and we're going to install it down here. Oh, Jenny found a chipmunk. <laughs> She's a little hunter, so funny, right under the deck. So we're going to do an, an eco pond in here. So that's coming soon. So I've been really busy setting that up. So sorry that I haven't had very many videos um, in the last little while, but it's been crazy busy setting all this up. So what's the MVP of a garden? What's the MVP kingdom on the planet? It's not animals, it's not plants. In my humble opinion, it's fungus. So the MVP of any garden is right here. If you don't have these in your garden, look to get some mushrooms. These are edible. These are King's Triforia wine cap. It's a very common mushroom because uh, to use in forest food forest gardens because they actually like to live in a little bit of sun so when you're putting uh, wood chips down on the ground uh, king strophoria mushrooms will actually love to live in there look at that and look at look at what wood chips do like see how far down i've already gone look at this like no problem just my hand you know, six six inches, eight inches down. So, wine caps. Let's go find another pack. We had some tent caterpillars um, on the service berry tree. So I pulled them off and stuck them in the water and they are all gone. Free food for the fish. So before people scream at me, yes, those are water hyacinths. No, they're not invasive here. They actually die in the winter. Even if seed got out, they're actually not invasive here. Be very careful planting water hyacinths. Um, if you're in a place that the winters don't kill it 100%. But this pond is going to get replaced with a wetland filter for the, for the new pond, eco pond system. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, a company called Aquascape is doing it, specifically a guy Joe Genovese from Genoscape Inc. He's got a YouTube channel, you can check him out. Uh, but let's go find some more mushrooms. I had a mushroom omelette this morning. It was unbelievable. But I know I've got a patch down here near my strawberries. And indeed, we've got more. So this is strawberries, with not straw as the cover material, but wood chips. And all I did was, where I had the King Strophoria in the other spot, I just dug up the mycelium, and I transplanted it. So you can see we have, if I zoom back out, oh, I am zoomed out. I actually have it all down through here. All in here. Look at those beauties. Look at that. Free food. I planted these like two years ago and it's just free food popping up. So I'm going to get some of the more open ones. What they'll do is they'll throw up this primordia and then they will spawn from here. They'll, they'll shoot out spawn. So let's go transplant these and propagate them. So you guys can't smell this, but I'm smelling these mushrooms in my hand. They smell so good. This, I talked about this, is going to be a new bed. 
This is uh, south this way. And this is going to be a new bed. I'm going to plant it out to sh more shade loving stuff. It should still get some sun, but there's going to be definitely a shade aspect in here. So lots of currents. Um, and what I want to do is because I've put this wood chip path down, I actually want to inoculate it with mushrooms that I want. So there's going to be saprophytic mushrooms in here for sure. But I actually want my own mushrooms. So what you can do is basically, like I could just do this and leave it like that, that's fine. But what I'm actually going to do is just kind of dig them in a bit. Now spreading out the spawn is probably better. Spreading out the mycelia, buying some mycelia, a thick web of mycelia from a spawn bag is probably a better way. But if I'm not gonna eat those mushroom heads, the primordia, then I might as well spread it and make more food. Let them inoculate that whole bed. Okay, so. We're back at the peach tree guild. So this is the Genesis, actually the, the Genesis peach is down there. The first peach I ever did. This is the second one. I did pruning videos on these peaches. So this is the Genesis, or this is the peach, just a peach tree guild. It's got uh, comfrey peaches. We've got some lamb's quarters growing in the bottom. I, I like lamb's quarters, so I'm going to let that seed out. Some dogs are coming. My dogs are going crazy. We've got comfrey root divisions. This is a, another comfrey that I took the root divisions from. And then we've got comfrey all down here. This comfrey all gets chopped and dropped and put down to build soil. You can see different places where I, I have older plant material. It's degrading, decaying down. We've got a nitrogen fixing shrub here. This is sea buckthorn. And we've got peas planted all around to come up. I plant my seed in my peach pits. So there's peaches there. I like to include rocks um, in scattered spots, both for animal habitat and edge and uh, solar capture, heat capture. This way when the, the sun hits this rock and kind of warms it up, it'll make a heat gradient. And different plants can find where they want to exist and be in there. We've got clovers creeping in along all the edges. And then we've got some elderberry and some currants and some phlox flowers. This was my grandmother's favorite flower. So we even include, this is one of the only just pure ornamental flowers that we'll include. That's just because I miss my grandma. So what we're gonna do is actually dig up some of this mushroom spawn and we're going to transplant that as well and try to propagate some of that all right so let's dig this up while the dogs are not going as crazy as they were let me get a nice big fat mat of it look at this now the best way to dig it up i actually have a bit of a root in there the best way to dig it up is not this way, because this is all one cell wall thick organism, the mycelium. The best way would be to take a nice flat shovel and try to disturb it as little as possible. But we are going to put, you know what, we're going to put some right here. So this is an area where I sewed in some uh, nitrogen fixing shrub, uh, Siberian pea shrub, and we're stool layering a hascap bush. So we are actually going to dig this in right here. And I'm gonna find a way to do this one-handed. It's not gonna work. All right, let's just do it like this. Okay, so that's it. Not rocket science. Super easy. Now that may or may not take. It did in the other spot. That was good enough to get Kingstrophoria in my 
uh, strawberry patch and it can spread it's got a bunch of open area I have a dog fence that comes in here so I'm not sure it'll be interesting to watch to see if there's any interference with the electrical from the dog fence maybe some kind of magnetic um, interference as the electricity runs through the wire so we'll see if the mushrooms like that or not it'll be a neat science experiment and now we're gonna actually harvest so if we look at these guys they're obviously too young but surprisingly these will be roughly the size of these tomorrow this patch here was about as big as this guy here uh, maybe six hours ago eight hours ago so you can see there's a bunch coming up this little guy is going to be the size of the big ones now with mushrooms the actual animal you know it's not an animal but the actual fungus is actually the mycelium that's the actual mushroom so with many plants you don't want to over harvest them with mushrooms it's not that big of a problem just covering these up so that they're nice and underneath protected from the direct sunlight with mushrooms you can harvest everything here I can harvest it all because this is just the genetics this is like the seed the spores come from from here and then I'm also going to quickly talk about how to identify these and how you can tell that you have King Strephoria and not a poisonous mushroom. But this is it. This is all you do to harvest them. We're going to add these to our dinner tonight. This can be delicious. But even if you don't like eating these, the value that these come, have from chewing up the wood chips, you saw me digging in. I'm just digging in with my fingers six feet deep like it's nothing. This thing is going to rip apart the wood chips and turn it into soil, nutrients, most importantly in a bioavailable form a chelated form that the plants can eat and it's the only organism that can chew up lignans and wood and the lignans in the wood represent you know 50 years of solar energy captured and stored into the cell walls of a tree there's tremendous amounts of energy in this and value in this wood for your plants you just need to make it available and the mushrooms do it so even if you don't want to eat them it's good to have this it's good to get these specifically if you want because they're really good in the sun and they're really good in wood chips you don't have to drill holes into the side of a log and put a, a spawn plug in it you can just put them as you saw how easy it was that I transplanted them so you can just put it right in wood chips and they'll survive really well let's talk about identifying them brown cap if you, if you find these things, there's no toxic mushroom that has these characteristics. Brown solid cap, okay? Button shaped, underside of purple slash gray slash um, brownish gills radiating outwards from the center, so radially gills. And this collar specifically, this collar is a, all three of those things. The shape, the color, the gills, not holes or pores, but gills, the color of underneath the gills, and this ripped up collar. You see all those things. There's no mushroom that has been identified in the history of mankind that's poisonous that has those characteristics. So this is another good reason why to pick Kingstrophoria. The last good reason to pick Kingstrophoria is they're absolutely delicious. They're unbelievable. So let's go cook. All right, so here's today's dinner, 100% free. Just walked around my land and grabbed it. Um, what I'm going to do with this is actually go plant these out. So I'm going to go plant these out just the same way I did the other spawn. This is just the bottoms of the, of the mushrooms. We're going to chop these up, a little bit of butter, a little bit of butter, some garlic. I'll have to go get some garlic out of the garage. Um, grind up the tomatoes and the peppers. I'll add the peppers in late. I always add the garlic in um, half when I'm cooking to get that beautiful roasted garlic flavor. But then you always put in half raw right at the end because the raw garlic um, 
has all the nutrients that haven't been destroyed by the heat yet. So the most health benefits are from the raw garlic. So always add a little bit of raw in afterwards. And then we're going to cook up some nice pork chops that we got for the kids. Um, and it's going to be a wonderful dinner. Uh, most of it was free, which is awesome. And then we'll have a nice little soup that I can store the extras in and then put it over uh, rice tomorrow maybe or some noodles as an, another meal. All for free. Man, it is so rewarding to grow in your own food. So get out there and get growing your own food. For garlic, um, it's a little dark in here. What I'm looking for is uh, when you pick garlic, you should pick it where you have a bit of the stem left, and then when you dry it, you should leave a bit of the stem. This stem actually wraps around the bulbs, so it protects them and preserves them for a long time. If you don't pick it soon enough, then you can get a, a dried up stem that falls off as you pick it. And you want to look for bulbs where that happened. You can see here this this garlic here has some exposed bulbs. So I'm going to be eating these ones first. This is a good example. So this one here didn't have the stem on it. The stem kind of rotted off of it. And when it does, it exposes all these clothes to air. So this specific bulb of garlic is going to rot faster. It'll probably only store three months or so. So I'm going to eat this guy tonight. You die tonight. So garlic, onions, mushrooms, and I added some apples. Well, let's experiment. Cooking is supposed to be fun. Uh, added green peppers, banana peppers, um, orange peppers. Bunch of tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes, apples, a bunch of stuff. We'll throw some grapes in as well. Uh, we might do that more towards the end. <laughs> it's a bit of a, you know, paint it by ear on the way. So this is just a, a little coat that I put on it. It's just some flour, salt, pepper, paprika. So I apologize if you're vegan or vegetarian, turn away. The kids love meat. We eat meat not very often, uh, but we're having some pork chops today. So if you don't like seeing cooked meat, turn away for a second. And if you hear background sounds, um, that's the kids who play in Minecraft. Um, and they're fighting the Ender Dragon right now. So it's, I guess that's a big deal. Okay, so here's the pork chops. And I just put a quick little sear on them. Uh, just in some olive oil because it, it doesn't smoke. So you want to do your sear... Um, hot, but you want an oil that doesn't smoke, so that's really important. So, uh, sears on the pork chop, and now I'm going to put the, the batter on it, and then I'm going to cook it in the stir fry. So, I put the surface rub on the lamb chops, added some basil, some grapes, um, and now I'm just going to kind of stir it, um, sorry, sear it, like uh, fry it inside this stir fry. When I'm done, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the stir fry and grind it up and turn it into a sauce that I can put on the lamb chops. Okay, so here's all the leftover parts. So let's turn this into a sauce. Okay, here's the sauce. Final thing of the sauce. Pretty good. Really good. So that's like onions, mushrooms, tomatoes. Guys, come on. Enough bean nut bags. Let's go. Pork chops. Try it. What's this though? It's an apple. Oh. It's a fried apple. What is it like? Good. <laughs> Try the sauce. See if you like it. What is it? Sauce. What sauce? It's veggies.
<laughs> you want to be good? <laughs> Is it good? It'd be good with the sauce. With your mouth shut. So that's it. Dinner was a big hit. Everyone gobbled it all up. That sauce was unbelievable. It was so good and it was all that mushrooms. So I'll see you next time.